So suppose your mom bought an option based on a hot stock tip and she calls you up all excited and says, hey, I just bought this option on this great stock. How much money am I going to make? And so you say, well, what's the stock like? And she you know, says, well, I have mu and I have sigma for the stock. How much is my option worth? How much money am I going to make when it expires? And so you start doing some calculations and you realize that Black Shoals is not helping you very much to figure out how much money she's going to make. So what can you do? What do you need? You actually need a probability density function, p. And so p of y prime at time t prime given y at t. That's how I would read that. So this is a probability density function. And so we're interpreting this as this is the given part and this is the probability density function part. So we can think about this is now and this is the future. So the density of the f different states of the future given the now. That's the way we're thinking about it. And this is probability density. So to get an actual probability, we have to integrate. So an integral from A to B of p of y t y prime t prime dy prime this will give us the probability that y is between a and b at time t prime given that it's at y at time t okay so how do we find p so how do we get p and the answer is the uh, Kolmog uh, like that. Kolmogorov equation. And so let's write out what what's y. So y is going to be a stochastic variable and have some behavior. So it'll have some deterministic part and some random part. So I'm going to call those A and B. And this is our stochastic differ differential equation for Y. Then the Kolmogorov equation, the uh, it's actually the backwards. The backwards Kolmogorov equation is partial of P with respect to T plus half B Y T squared second partial of p with respect to y squared plus a times p with respect to t uh, y equals zero all right so here's our backwards kolmogorov equation and remember we have a uh, p of y t y prime t prime and so you can see this is backwards because we're solving for p as t and y change. So we're, we're given this and we're finding this side. And so we're, we're going this direction, which is why it's backwards. OK, so we have a way of finding p. If we can solve differential equations, we can figure out what p is and work it out. That means if we have some particular you know behavior so let's let's do the regular log normal so ds is mu s dt plus sigma s dx this is nothing surprising just log normal then how does p work let's do the backwards equation here so we get partial of p with respect to t plus a half, then b squared. So b is this part, so sigma squared, s squared. And then the second partial plus a, then p respect to y equals 0. And then if you look at this, 
you start thinking, hmm, this is similar to Black Shoals. But it's not actually Black Shoals yet. So let's think, how do we use this to value an option? So let's call V our option value. Then we can set P of S comma capital T to our payoff. And we you know we're working we're working backwards. So we, we set our initial conditions for P at the end, and we're working backwards with the backwards Komogorov equation. And how is V related to P? The answer is that V will be the discounted version of P. So P is our expected payoff and V will be the, the discounted version of the expected payoff. And so V of S T it's gonna be if I can remember how to discount E to the negative R difference of times times P of S T. So P, solving the differential equation here backwards, we get the expected value of the payoff. And here we're discounting it to the present. And that will be our option value. Then what? Then we can notice that V satisfies almost this equation up here, just that we get this extra term and so we actually get V with respect to T plus a half sigma squared S squared second partial with respect to S squared plus mu S partial V with respect to S minus RV equals zero now this is looking even more like black shoals. And so what's different? This is the key difference here. So we've got the time, the volatility part, second derivative, and then here in Black Shoals, this is R in Black Shoals. And here it's mu, the drift. And that's the only difference. And so what can we say? So we know that the Black Shoals is the, the value of an option. And so this is the discounted value, the discounted expected value of the payoff. So we can say that an option value is discounted expected value of payoff, but with mu going to R, right? So we have to change this mu to an r. And this, this means that our random walk is actually ds equals r s dt plus sigma s dx in order to get the, the correct expectation value. And we actually call this a risk neutral random walk.
so this is pretty cool so this this brings up another question so why isn't mu the drift why does the drift not appear in black shoals and when we did the expected value of the option it did appear and that seems kind of reasonable like why isn't it just the expected value of the option and the answer is the no arbitrage argument so no arbitrage means that if we can diversify risk it's the same as putting the money in the bank so if we if we can reduce risk to zero somehow we can't profit from it and in the black shoals model we have an option and we're delta hedging and the delta hedge removes all the risk of the option and therefore we end up with just the interest rate r it makes sense right no arbitrage means that you don't get rewarded for taking diversifiable risk and and risk that you can hedge and so it's not just the expected value here you have to assume that the random walk is a risk neutral random walk it, so suppose you violated this assumption suppose that options actually did have a mu here then that means you could delta hedge and you'd get the return with the mu and it would be risk-free money and you'd be getting an interest rate mu instead of an interest rate r and that would exactly violate the no arbitrage principle this is this is pretty amazing stuff here very cool